Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Test Prep Time Live. We're presenting every day, every weekday here, Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. Um, Method Test Prep is sharing some key insights and strategies about the SAT and the ACT. Really wanting you to focus on the most important concepts and strategies that will come up on the SAT and ACT to be better prepared and planning ahead to ace these exams. Uh, my name is Oliver. I'm the director of tutoring here at Method Test Prep. I work with a lot of students in classes, one-on-one -on -one tutoring, uh, trying to share uh, some of these key insights and ideas uh, to help you on the SAT and ACT. A lot of these concepts we'll see will also be applicable in school as well. Um, good English concepts, reading strategies, uh, math concepts, uh, all these things are going to help um, beyond the SAT and ACT as well. Um, but hopefully you'll get a lot out of these short 15-minute sessions we have in the morning. Um, feel free to chat in if you have any questions. Uh, we'll try and leave a minute or so at the end uh, to answer anything. I wanted to take a quick moment just to let you all know that uh, in addition to these test prep time lives, uh, we also have classes online. Uh, we do a lot of online tutoring as well. So if you've been doing some work from home, uh, working with teachers uh, through Zoom or or other uh, programs. Um, we do online tutoring all year long, and it's very seamless. We do private SAT and ACT tutoring, but we also do academic subject tutoring in a variety of subjects, biology, chemistry, calculus, uh, even if you're preparing for the upcoming AP exams, or just want to stay on track with your schoolwork during this uh, you know, somewhat disruptive time, um, we have a lot of excellent teachers that can help you. Just reach out, and you can see at the bottom the URL there. Uh, you can find out more information on our website. All right, today we're gonna to talk about similar triangles. Um, geometry features pretty heavily on these exams, uh, a little bit more so on the ACT, but the SAT has um, a good amount of geometry questions and they seem to be really focused on similar concepts that come up a lot. And one of those is similar triangles. Uh, this is something you'll see on both the SAT and ACT pretty regularly. Uh, you want to get familiar with all the aspects of it and just be able to look for certain signs and patterns that can direct you to what you need to do. Um, obviously, with math, uh, we do have to know certain rules and formula uh, to do well on these sections. So we bring some knowledge from school into these tests. And then we have to join that with some strategies and insights about the, the tests themselves and the format of the test and, and how they present this information. You might be familiar with some of these concepts from um, earlier in school, uh, and you want to get used to seeing how they show this on the SAT and ACT, things to look for. All right, first, just a quick review of some key concepts when it comes to similar triangles. Similar triangles are best thought of as a small version of a larger triangle or a large version of a smaller triangle. It's sort of like shrinking uh, or growing a triangle. And so it really involves the math concept of proportion. In two similar triangles, all the corresponding angles are equal and all the corresponding sides are in proportion. So one of the first things that you can do is just make sure you see the correct corresponding parts of both triangles. If it, if it requires you to like redraw it a little bit, you can. Uh, just make sure you have the right sides and angles lined up. Because it's a proportion idea, setting up a correct proportion is really going to be the key part of solving most of these questions. You're definitely gonna to have to know some triangle rules at times, um, such as area of a triangle, Pythagorean theorem, um, basic trig functions like SOHCAHTOA, those will come into play at times. So we have to know our triangle rules and formula pretty well. I'm gonna show you a couple common shapes that can hint that you're dealing with a triangle, a similar triangle question. And just a warning to read carefully. Um, I'll show you an example where uh, if you move too quickly, you might get the answer wrong, but you have to look at the actual question. Always know what you're going for on the math questions. Let's take a look at some basic um, ideas that we're gonna need for some of these problems today. Um, obviously the area of a triangle is one half the base times the height. Uh, that will come into play sometimes. Um, the next one you see here is the Pythagorean theorem. 
c squared equals a squared plus b squared, where you can take two sides of a right triangle and find the hypotenuse, or if you have the hypotenuse, work your way back to one of the sides. Um, that will come in handy. And of course, uh, really the basics, trig 101, um, there's not a tremendous amount of trigonometry on either of these exams, uh, but you do need to know sort of the basic SOHCAHTOA um, mnemonic device there for sine opposite hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Now, as you can see here on these two triangles I've drawn, um, these are similar triangles, and what you want to remember about similar triangles are they're essentially the same triangle, just grown or shrunken down. Um, so what we're really trying to figure out with similar triangles is how much have we grown the triangle to make it the bigger one, or how much have we shrunk it down um, to make it the smaller one. Basically, what is the ratio or relationship between these two triangles? You definitely want to remember that, as you can see here, I've lined up both triangles in similar orientation or position, and this is going to allow me to match the corresponding parts. Angle A is in the same position as angle D, and these two angles are exactly the same. Angle B and angle E, you can see, in this case are actually right angles. So those are both 90, and those are equal. And of course, C and F in corresponding positions are also the same degree measure. Now, the side AB here will be in a proportion to the side DE, the corresponding side. So let's say this side was four. We know if we, for instance, doubled this triangle to make it bigger, this side would be eight, and it would correspond to that side. So what I'm doing is to get to this triangle, I'm doubling everything. Let's say EF is three, well then BC must be six. And if my hypotenuse of the small triangle is five, the bigger one is a hypotenuse of 10. Okay, all the corresponding angles are exactly equal. It doesn't matter how big or small you make your triangle, those angles won't change, those values won't change. They'll always be the same amount of degrees. It's the sides that are really growing or shrinking by a similar factor or multiple. In this case, we're just doubling to get from DEF to ABC. I wanna look at a few more really important concepts that come up on these questions to make sure you have these sort of in your back pocket and that you're looking for them as well. What I often tell students is it's not simply that you're memorizing these to get the question right, which is of course important. Um, but even on the SAT, they do provide a couple of geometry formula right in the test for you. So you can reference back on the first page and see them. Um, not everything you need, so you do need to memorize a lot, but it's not so much going back. It's about knowing these well enough that you can recognize them when you look at the problem. Sometimes it's not just about solving it, it's about recognizing it early on that you're dealing with certain familiar concepts uh, familiar shapes, familiar patterns. Here's a really important one, the good old three, four, five Pythagorean triple. So when we talk about a Pythagorean triple, we're talking about a relationship between the three sides of a right triangle. Now, if you've got two of the sides, you could always use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the missing side, and that's fine. If you get stuck, you can always do that. I'm just trying to provide for you a little shortcut here to recognize if a triangle has some pattern in a ratio of sides with the base or the height being three or four or a multiple, you can guarantee that the hypotenuse will be five or a multiple of five. And that's just a Pythagorean triple that they've, mathematicians have already worked out for us, so you can just memorize it. You don't have to go through the process of doing the entire Pythagorean formula. You also need to recognize when it's a multiple of a special tri of a Pythagorean triple. So on the left, you can see, you may not immediately notice the pattern of the sides, but it's the same three, four, five triangle. It's just been expanded five times. It's, it's multiplied everything by five. So the base goes from three to 15, the height goes from four to 20, and the hypotenuse, of course, goes from five to 25.
This is one more I would definitely know. Uh, this shows up probably every ACT and every SAT almost. Um, the good old 5, 12, 13. Not as famous as the 3, 4, 5, but also um, pretty important. And again, you see, if you just double all those, you might see a 10, 24, 26. Same idea. I just doubled the 5, 12, 13. It's just another Pythagorean triple that comes up often and is worth recognizing. Okay, next I just wanted to point out very quickly some common shapes or uh, pictures that you'll see on the SAT and ACT. Um, these can indicate that you're dealing with similar triangles, even if you don't recognize it at first glance. In the first case, I have what's called a nested triangle where you can see the little triangle is inside a bigger triangle. Well, guess what? The bigger triangle and the little triangle are similar triangles, right? Here we've got our right angle, same right angle. Here we literally have the same angle ending the corner of both of these triangles. And then this angle, we'll call it D, would match this angle A. And if you want to label all these real quick, B and E are the same. And then I guess you could call this C or F. It's the same angle for both. You can see the little triangles just nested within the bigger one. On the right side, you see what's more of an hourglass shape. Same thing going on here. If I were to flip this around, you could line them up and see that they're similar triangles. These angles will be the same. And you may remember from geometry, these are actually vertical angles. So those are congruent. These right angles are also the same. And these angles at the extremity are also equal. Okay, so just recognize these shapes and when you see them, hint, hint, you're probably dealing with a similar triangles question. That can give you a leg up and a head start on a lot of questions. Let's take a look at a typical question um, from an SAT test. And I wanna give you an added warning here. Um, try your best to keep things simple and don't get overwhelmed by long word problems. I know it can be cumbersome or just you know uh, a lot of work to get through reading the whole thing and understanding everything, but read through it once and then go back and start to underline the key things you need. This actually is a simpler question than it first appears, but they're trying to overwhelm us with too much information. Okay, let's take a look. A summer camp counselor wants to find a length X in feet across a lake as represented in the sketch above length x in feet across a lake. I see that here as side AE. The lengths represent, represented by AB, EB, BD, and CD on the sketch were determined to be 1,800 feet, 1,400 feet, 700 feet, and 800 feet respectively. I'm gonna pause right here and I'm just gonna fill in the information that they gave me on my picture. If you've noted, we've got that hourglass shape again. I've already got a suspicion this is gonna be similar triangles. If I flipped BDC triangle around, you could see the corresponding sides. You just have to be careful here because the picture is a little bit um, maybe tough at first to match. But again, just like that last picture we saw, we know that these angles will be the same surrounding the point B because they're vertical angles. We know that angle D and angle E will be corresponding. They're sort of mirror images and angle C and angle A will also be corresponding. Okay, now line AB, they say is 1800. So I'm gonna fill that in. 1800 is line AB. Line EB is 1400. So I'm gonna fill that in here. Line BD is 700, okay. And line CD is 800. Segments AC and DE intersect at point B. And angle AEB here. And angle CDB here have the same measure. What is the value of X? Again, stay very focused on the question and what they're asking you to do. The value of X here, okay, well this side AE is gonna to correspond to which side of the other triangle? 
it's the outermost edge. And that, if we sort of flip this picture over and shrunk it down, this would correspond to side DC. Now, the next thing I need to realize is what is the shrinking or growing factor, or how much am I multiplying the little triangle to get to the big triangle? Well, I'm going to use the sides BD and the sides EB because they are corresponding sides, and I can see that there's a relationship. 700, this is BD. So the relation between BD to EB will be the same exact proportion or relationship as CD is to the side I need to find out AE. So BD is 700, EB is 1400. I'm going to set that equal because I know the proportion will be the same as CD is to X. Okay, now I could cross multiply here, but maybe a shortcut is just to recognize the relationship between the sides. What happens from BD to get to EB? Looks like I multiplied by two. I just doubled it. Okay, the big triangle is just ABE is just a double of BDC. It's just twice as big. So side CD is also going to get doubled, and the value of X must therefore be double 800, which is 1600. And even without choices here, this was a grid in question, I have the correct answer, 1600. So it turned out just to be a similar triangles question buried in a lot of information. Let's take a look at another problem here. And this is one that shows a sort of trap that the SAT or the ACT like to do at times. And you have to read the question carefully. Okay, you see the hourglass shape again, hint, hint probably similar triangles. We want to make sure we understand which sides are corresponding and which angles. This angle or vertical angles around point B will be the same. D matches A again, sort of the mirror image. And C matches E in this picture. Those are the same. Now, in the figure above, AE is parallel to CD. That helps because you may remember a transversal cutting between two parallel lines has some helpful rules like vertical angles, alternate interiors, um, any way you want to think about it, either as a transversal or two similar triangles. If you just flip the little one around, you can match up the sides. The segment AD intersects CE at B. We can see that in the picture. What is the length of segment CE? Okay. Well, if you notice, I have two similar triangles and I want to find out what the relationship or proportion is. It looks like BD is corresponding to side AB. And what's happening? Five becomes 10. Okay, I'm doubling. The ratio is five to 10 or really one to two. So I can use that same information to make a relationship between BE and its corresponding side in the little triangle CB. Well, in the big triangle, if it's eight, that means in the little triangle, if it's going to be the same proportion, I'm doubling, here I'm gonna cut it in half. So it's four over eight. So I can fill inside CB now, it's four. Ah, careful, before you fill in that answer, that's not what the question was asking for. It's actually asking for the length of the segment CE, which is all the way from here down to here. So not only including the new information, new length I found for CB4, I've got to add that to the existing length of BE8. And of course, of course, without even a calculator, 4 plus 8 is 12. And that is my answer. That is the length of CE. So be careful here. I just saw a student who's um, been practicing and working really hard and is getting really close to only maybe a handful of questions wrong on the math section and still got this one wrong because they just moved too quickly. So always read very carefully, especially that final question to make sure you know what they're looking for. Okay, last example. Just wanna show you a similar triangles question that involves a little bit of trigonometry. Again, not a lot, you just need to know the basic SOHCAHTOA. Here, 
we have a figure above and triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. They ask, what is the value of the cosine of angle E? Well, once again, similar triangles. We now know we can match corresponding angles. Angle B and angle E are the same degree measure, just as A and D are and C and F are, as we've seen in previous examples. If this is the same exact angle degrees E as B is, then if I'm going to find the cosine of E, I know that even if the length of the sides of ED here and the length of the side DF is larger than these sides, the ratio of the sides together will always still be the same because, again, it's just a multiple. So, even if I don't know the exact lengths of the sides of EDF, I can still use the information in the smaller triangle to solve this because the cosine of this angle will match the cosine of this angle since they are the same angle. So what would be the cosine of B? Well, B cosine would of course be adjacent over hypotenuse. And in this picture below, we see that the adjacent side to B is 12. The hypotenuse is 13. That means it's 12 over 13. Since B is the exact same angle as E, we now know that the cosine of E is the same, 12 over 13, or choice B. All right, so that's it for today. I wanted to show you a little insight about similar triangles. These come up often enough on both tests to know them really inside and out. Remember, you have to know a couple of triangle rules. So Katoa, maybe area of a triangle, maybe Pythagorean theorem. Don't forget your Pythagorean triples, 3, 4, 5, and 5, 12, 13. That can be really helpful. Make sure you read carefully. And find the corresponding angles and the corresponding sides. The angles will be identical in similar triangles, and the corresponding sides will be in proportion. Really what you're trying to find out most of the time in similar triangle questions is, what is the proportion? What is the multiple that I'm growing or shrinking my triangle to? All right. Don't forget to join us. Um, next week, we'll be doing these test prep times at 11. We're also hosting a series of test prep time plus classes, longer versions of uh, our sessions here. Um, only 10 bucks. We're having one today at 1 o'clock. We're going to focus on quadratics today on the math um, test prep time plus. And then next week, we'll have a series of test prep time plus again at 1 o'clock. We also have longer class formats, 18-hour classes, a full class for the SAT or ACT that are ongoing. We're starting every few weeks. Uh, jump on our website and find one that looks good for you. We have an excellent software program that you can use on your own without a teacher, without a class. You can get a lot of prep done, see all the concepts and strategies you need. It's actually 50% off for anyone on today who wants to put in the future, uh, the code FUTURE at checkoff. Um, sorry, checkout, and you can get um, 50% off this program you can use um, throughout uh, all your prep. And if you have any questions, just reach out. Happy to speak with anyone, advise you on your test prep plan, just answer general questions about the SAT or ACT. All right. That was helpful. I'm going to stay on for a minute for any last questions. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.